All right, part two. I've never done a two part video before, but first of all, that one was getting long and it got interrupted because apparently a flash flood is rolling through here. And I really don't feel like recreating or re-recording uh, the first 22 minutes of this video because I thought it was going pretty well. And the production value of these videos is obviously so low, I don't think anyone that actually watches them is going to be too upset that it's in two parts. But anyway, uh, we're almost done talking about this. The punch bowl kill is really odd, but it fits, okay? And then I just wanted to go into the end real quick. Um, they end up, since they kill him, and he's, for some reason, they don't feel like burying him. Probably because it's almost going to be dawn. So they don't have time to bury him. That's my assumption there. So they escape the hotel together in a car. And the whole movie is a little bit slow to unfurl. Which is fine. I, I'm, I'm okay with it because it's well done. It's well shot. The music is good. The acting is good. And it's a little quirky. So I was into it. But then all of a sudden it just kind of like rushed at the end. And um, while they're driving, the sun comes up, which I just feel like if this woman is 300 plus years old, like that's how she's gonna go out. She just like is in a, like, in a car and she's just like, ah, the sun's coming up. So they like both lose control because I guess at this point, Valerie's kind of turned and they lose control of a car and then it crashes. And <laughs> that's, <laughs> It was cool, but like really it doesn't fit in my opinion, but uh, Elizabeth wasn't wearing her seatbelt. So when the car crashes, she goes flying out of the window and happens to land on a branch, which impales her through the heart. So she dies. Cause she, that's basically like a stake through the heart. Okay, so it doesn't really match the vibe of the movie in my opinion. Although I liked it cause it was crazy, but the rest of the movie like wasn't crazy. So I wasn't expecting that crazy of an end. And it could have ended right there and I would have been fine with that. But then it says like a few months later and then Valerie is somehow walking around. Oh, the car exploded by the way. And so she obviously completely died and was like blasted and burned. And then all of a sudden she's walking around somewhere and she has the voice of Elizabeth, but the body of Valerie. And uh, I don't know, like the ending is like a little bit weird to me. Maybe if I watched it a third time, I would like be able to accept that ending more. But overall, I give it a seven out of 10. It's not super exciting. It is definitely as people would call a slow burn. I, I, I don't know if I really like that term or not because whatever. But um, there, the whole thing is pretty consistent until the end. It's well done. It's a beautiful horror movie. It's a romance. It's a drama. It's very well done. And as I was saying in the last video uh, for the Corpse Grinders, this is a highbrow horror film probably even more highbrow than Hammer, which I have always thought that Hammer was a very respectable uh, horror production company. It always had great actors, great sets, great production value, but there is a bit of an element of silliness to Hammer, like theatrical. I think I said that when I watched it, Hammer films like years ago, started watching them three years ago or whatever. Or yeah, that's probably right. They ha they feel like plays, especially because of the costumes. They're always period pieces. And it's like people like Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing dressing up and doing a Shakespeare play, except it's not Shakespeare. It's these old Gothic horrors that take place in castles. And this is different. It might be because it's a contemporary film set in the modern times, 1971. Or it just might be because like there's nothing silly. Uh, the costumes, the people are wearing regular, regular clothes. I should also point out, it's rather obvious, but this whole movie is basically in black, white, and red. Not literally. People have their regular skin tone and their hair and whatnot, but both Valerie and 
especially Elizabeth, are basically platinum blonde. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of red. I mean, it's called the red lips. There's a lot of red, a lot of black, and a lot of white, and some silver, which really is like black and white, right? There's, I'm not sure if there's any yellow or green or blue or purple or orange in this entire movie. I don't think there really is. Um, there's, you could say there's some gray, but it almost looks like dark white or light black, which is like, imagine you're wearing a white shirt in a dark room. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look gray. It looks like, poor, like underlit white. At least that's how my brain interpreted it. So overall seven out of 10, but like a real strong seven out of 10. And it took me two watches to really appreciate it. And uh, I, you know, if you have any insight into any of the areas that confused me, I would love to hear it. And if you could find Mel Pertuis for me, I would love that even more. All right, we'll see you next time. Sorry about the split two video thing. Take care.